amigos y amigas, bienvenidos to your best resource for moving to Mexico, Mexico Relocation Guide. My name is Mariana and in today's video, we're going to take you on a journey to one of the most iconic true Mexican cities, a relic of Western Mexico. Morelia. You'll discover that this place is a hidden gem for retirees looking for a true Mexican city with a very affordable cost of living. It has beautiful landscapes, great weather, it's artistically and culturally active, it has warm people and awesome food. So why don't we get started? Now for those of you that don't know anything about Morelia, Morelia is in the state of Michoacán, which is located on the west side of Mexico and on the north side of the state, that's where the capital city is, the city of Morelia. The city stands at an average altitude of 1,900 meters above sea level, which is about 6,300 feet, in a valley that provides great conditions for really enjoyable weather all year round. Its history goes way back to the arrival of the conquistadores. The first settlements actually date back to the 7th century by the regional ethnic group called Burepechas, who remain present in this time and day and have great influence on the culture of the region. Now, since 1991, the historic downtown of Morelia was inducted into the list of World Heritage Sites by UNESCO because of its monumental architecture and the importance of its buildings to the history and identity of the country. By now, you're probably wondering how the transition would be for you if you decide to move to Morelia. Well, it's one of those true Mexican cities, so if you're looking to live in an authentic Mexican city, this place will be great for you. The expat community here is not really that big. It seems like the number of foreign retirees from the United States and Canada are still in the hundreds, which means living here means you'll meet people that are very proud of their state of Michoacán. And even though the English speaker population is growing, we still recommend learning and studying some Spanish beforehand. It's gonna make your life a lot easier here. And even though this could be true for all of Mexico as a general rule of thumb, You'll be surprised at how many people in Morelia are bilingual and are going to be glad to study their English with you. Locals here are generally very relaxed and easygoing and they welcome extranjeros, which is Spanish for foreigners, from all backgrounds. In fact, there are regular get-togethers and dinner meetings to welcome the new expats in town so that you can either socialize or do some networking in case you're planning to move here. So I don't think you'll have a, a hard time finding that you can adapt to the city. It's an easy place to navigate and to make friends. And you can be certain that in Morelia, you will be more in touch and will learn a lot more about authentic Mexican culture. Now you're probably wondering what areas of Morelia you may want to consider living in. So let's explore some colonias or known as neighborhoods. As in most major cities in Mexico, one of the most appealing neighborhoods would be downtown or El Centro. Now let's start with the pros of living in Centro. First of all, as you can see, this downtown is beautiful. It's filled with gorgeous buildings and squares scattered all around. And in comparison to other historic downtowns in Mexico, this one is very affordable when it comes to renting. Also, living here means that you can spare having a car, since you'll have basically everything that you'll need within walking distance. And even if you do need to go further distances, you'll find it very easy to move around using public transportation. Now, a great area of this downtown is focused on commerce from restaurants, bakeries, clothing boutiques, bars, and everything else you can think of. However, some streets are quieter and more focused on residential. This could be a pro or a con since you are right in the middle of the action, but that also means it could get a bit noisy. So what does it cost to live in Centro? Well, it actually has a very big, diverse renting scale. You can find one bedroom studios or small apartments anywhere from 7,000 pesos, which would be great if you're a digital nomad or if you're living alone. And it goes up to about 50,000 to 60,000 pesos a month for a fully furnished five or more bedroom colonial house. But let's say the average would be around 12,000 to 20,000 pesos a month, which is around 600 to 1,000 US dollars a month for a two to three bedroom apartment. Now, another area you should consider are Chapultepec and Ventura Puente. These two neighborhoods are right next to each other, divided only by a road called Calzada Ventura Puente. Putting these two together makes up a big residential and com commercial area that is really close to Centro. This area of town is really easy to navigate and it offers all you need within a daily basis. 
It's urban design. It's a bit more aimed at families since you will find bigger homes here, but you can also find several buildings which have smaller apartments for young couples or singles. The fact that it has a more family-friendly vibe makes the area way more relaxed than Centro without compromising easy access to commercial areas since it's nearby to shopping centers, supermarkets, and all types of small businesses providing goods and services that you need on a daily basis and all within walking distance. But what does it cost to live here? Well, the price range is affordable and it's not as wide as in Centro since most houses and buildings are two, three, or four bedrooms. For example, you can find two bedroom apartments starting at 11,000 to 12,000 pesos, which is about 500 to 600 US dollars a month. You can also find large homes with four bedrooms ranging between 16,000 to 20,000 pesos a month, or roughly 800 to 1,000 US dollars a month. Similar price range to the ones in Centro, with the biggest difference here is that you'll get more space for your money and it is a quieter area. Now one more neighborhood we want to show you is a bit further south and it's called Santa Maria. This area is up on a hill, so in some parts you get a really nice view of the city. You can consider this area a little town inside the major city, even though it's a bit further away from Centro, it does provide everything you need. There are shopping centers, schools, residential neighborhoods, and some gated communities. One of the main appeals of this area is that it's not what you would call a suburb. It's more of a little old town blended in with the main city. Here, you will easily find everything you need also without needing a car. And the rhythm of this area is more relaxed and prices are far more reasonable. You can find houses with two to three bedrooms for about 10,000 to 11,000 pesos or roughly uh, 500 US dollars a month in the older parts of town. Now there are modern townhomes with three to four bedrooms in gated communities ranging between 17,000 to 28,000 pesos a month, which is roughly 850 to 1400 US dollars a month. Now there is a lot more to Morelia than these three neighborhoods, but we wanted to give you a slice of some of the areas that you might consider. Now the procedure to rent a house here is not difficult at all. It's just a matter of following steps and getting all the required paperwork. Have in mind that landlords here are not used to renting to foreigners. It doesn't mean they'll make it harder, but a translator would certainly make the transaction easier. Also, most landlords here will most likely ask you for proof of income, your resident visa, and to sign a contract, plus a few documents to ensure payment. If you need a recommendation for a reputable or trustworthy contact in Morelia who can either help you find a home or can help you with translating a lease agreement, check out our complete Mexico relocation guide. The link is in the comments. Now, what about utilities? Well, you're going to need water, electricity, gas, and internet. So let's jump into the average expenses for some of these topics. Now, Michoacán is one of the states with more water sources than most of the country. Two of the three biggest lakes in Mexico are here. Lake Cuitzeo, the second biggest in the country, and Lake Pátzcuaro, which is the third biggest one. We'll talk about it in another video. In Morelia, the Regulating Commission of Water is called OOAPAS, o -O -A -P -A -S, and they send you a bill every two months, which goes for about 200 to 400 pesos a month, making it about 100 to 200 pesos every month. That's only 10 US dollars a month, roughly. Now, regarding electricity, Morelia is like any other city in Mexico. The CFB, or the Federal Commission of Electricity, is the institution in charge of regulating the service of electricity. Your bill is showing up every two months, and you can expect the amount to be between 600 to 800 pesos a month, or roughly 30 to 40 US dollars. Now, because Morelia's weather is pleasant and temperate all year round, there really is no need for air conditioning or heating in the house. Now, what about gas? Well, the city has several gas providers, but the most trusted one seems to be Gas del Lago. The norm is having a gas tank in your house, which is usually a 30 liter capacity. And this usually is enough for two months for a household of roughly two people who regularly cook and have a water heater. Now, when your tank goes empty, you call the gas company, whichever one you choose, and they'll switch your tank for a full one. You can expect the cost to be 700 to 800 pesos a tank, which is enough for two months. So you can average that for 400 pesos a month, and that's about 20 US dollars a month. Now, what about internet? 
Well, there are three major providers of internet services in Mexico. That's Telmex, Izzy, and Total Play. There are a few more, but those would be the biggest companies nationwide. The cost of good internet could be anywhere between 1,500 and 1,800 pesos, which is about 70 to 90 US dollars a month. Now, if you're interested in learning more on whether living in Mexico is right for you, I highly recommend you check out our free Living in Mexico email series. I've broken down our email series into 10 easy to follow emails that'll help you cover a variety of topics from residency visas, healthcare, cost of living, best places to live, and so much more. Check out the link in the comment section. Now, what about shopping? It's a major part of your day-to-day -day life. So let's start with the things that you'll need. Getting your food, personal care, and housing goods will all depend on which area you're living in. For example, if you're living in Centro, then you can rely on the local markets. Here, you have three big markets. One would be Mercado Independencia, the other is Mercado Revolución, and Mercado Nicolás Bravo. In these three, you can find pretty much anything you need. There are a lot of fruit and vegetable stands, butcher shops, seeds, groceries, cheese, milk, cream, cleaning products, and even a food court. Buying here can save you a lot of money rather than shopping at the big box grocery stores. And you will also be helping the local economy since most of these vendors are local producers. But if you are looking for a bigger supermarket that does have a larger variety of imported products, or a wider variety of brands, you can go to one of the supermarkets you'll find in the city. The main ones are Soriana, Chedraui, as well as Walmart, Sam's Club, Home Depot, Office Depot, and those types of supermarkets that you can find a wider variety of products from back home. Remember that each colonia or neighborhood is always filled with small businesses and commercial areas providing all sorts of things. So whether you choose to live in Centro or in another area, you'll always have options nearby. Now for some other things like clothing, home goods, decorations, or some treats for yourself, you also have a lot of different options. You can opt for going to local handcrafted item markets or known as mercados de artesanías, where you can find a variety of things that are made locally. One thing worth mentioning about Michoacán is that it's one of the states with the most diversity when it comes to handcrafted arts and items. The region hosts a large number of indigenous settlements and citizens, and each of these villages or towns has a different craft. Most of these are focused on items designed to be for your day-to-day -day routine, as well as a lot of ornamental handcrafted art. So what I'm trying to say is that you can easily solve your cooking or clothing needs and even decorate your house in these local mercados. You'll be getting a lot of original handmade pieces of great quality for a very affordable price. Plus, they'll be entirely unique. But even then, there are still going to be things that you won't be able to find at these markets, like electronics and those kinds of things. In these cases, there are several malls in the city. Some are bigger than others. Starting with Plaza Las Americas, which is a fairly sized mall with a lot of international brand stores, a movie theater, department stores, and everything else that you'd find in the mall. There are also smaller ones scattered all across the city and very accessible points from each colonia or neighborhood. In these smaller malls, you can find a variety of businesses from banks to hardware stores, laundromats, veterinarians, pet shops, and everything else. You can also find organic markets, biking shops, and pretty much everything you can imagine. Morelia is a really large city. Now, one of the things that we think you'll love about Morelia is that it's pretty easy to get around. All neighborhoods are well provided with public transportation and are pretty good connected. This is a very walking friendly city. If you live in one of the neighborhoods we recommend, it should be pretty easy for you to run your errands and get around by walking or you could also consider owning a bike. Although we wouldn't recommend riding your bike for longer distances or on busy roads. For those kinds of trips, you can turn to public transportation such as buses or the famous combis, which is a common way of public transportation in Mexico. It's basically a van that covers some routes and streets or neighborhoods where buses don't have easy access. The city counts with a bus station offering long-distance trips to other major cities in Mexico, such as Mexico City, Guadalajara, Querétaro, and the like. 
as well as surrounding trips to the towns within the region. There's also an international airport where you can get travel directly to the United States, Canada, and even Europe. To get there, you can get a taxi or an Uber, which works perfectly fine in this city. So as we've been saying, navigating the city is pretty easy in a lot of aspects, and transportation is certainly one of them. Owning a car would be convenient if you live on the outskirts of the city, or if you just prefer to drive yourself everywhere. But we wouldn't say it's a must in Morelia. Now what about medical? Well, services here in Morelia are not so different than any other major city. For small issues, you have consultorios, which are basically private practices scattered across the city. One of the most famous in Mexico would be the one that you find inside of Farmacia Similares, which usually charges 50 pesos for a checkup, and you can find several other doctors offering private consultations on different specialties if the type of consultorio at the Farmacia Similar is not enough for you. Now, for larger emergencies or special treatment or surgeries, there are two big hospitals in the city. One of them is Star Medica, which is the biggest one in the city with a good reputation. It has branches in some other cities around the area as well. The other one is Victoria Hospital, which is also a big hospital offering several specialties and services. Now, what about things to do outside of your day-to-day -day life? Well, Morelia actually offers a lot of cultural activities, outdoor options, as well as nightlife. The historic downtown of Morelia is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So if you're into history and architecture, walking in the downtown area is a great experience. It can actually take you months to learn all the history and visit all the museums this downtown has to offer. If you like live music, there is a Conservatorio de las Rosas, which is a theater that attracts musicians not only from Mexico, but from different countries in North and South America, as well as from Europe. Now, there's also the Purepechas in the society, which is an indigenous group. And the majority of indigenous cultures in Mexico have their own folklore when it comes to music and dance. So this combination creates a very colorful and very rich cultural environment. There are a lot of music festivals all year round, as well as all sorts of scenic arts being performed, like dance, plays, which are presented normally in the many theaters scattered across downtown. In Morelia, you can find one of the most important film festivals in all of Latin America, which is the Morelia International Film Festival. In recent years, it has been getting more spotlight for having a lot of national and international artists coming to the festival, either to premiere their movies or to the galas. This festival is held every year between the months of October and November. Now, a very worthy note would be the food. I know I've said this a lot, but really Michoacan is super rich when it comes to culture and traditions. There are handcrafted arts, music, dances, costumes, and food is really not left behind. You can take a gastronomical tour that could take months and you won't even see the end of it. Michoacan's traditional gastronomy is really diverse and really delicious. Probably one of the best in the country. Let's start with the famous corundas. These are basically tamales that are served with a tomato sauce and cream. Then there's also aporreadillo, morisqueta, sopa tarasca, birria. I mean, it's a never ending list of traditional dishes that you can find in this region. If you're an avid foodie like me, you'll have the time of your life in Morelia. And last but not least, if you're into outdoor activities like hiking or mountain biking, you know, something more in touch with nature, you can find a lot to do in the surrounding towns of Morelia. If you're up for longer distances, you can explore the very extensive state because it does provide an ecosystem with a lot of different things to do. You can visit one of the many Pueblo Magicos like Pátzcuaro or Tzintzuntzán. The Tzintzuntzán is an archaeological site dating from before the colonial times. You can find these two and many other towns on the shore of Pátzcuaro Lake, all of them with different histories and tradition. Now for hiking, you have a lot of options. The most famous one, famous one in Michoacán would be visiting the dorm volcano of Paricutín, which is a three and a half hour drive, but it's totally worth it. You can consider this as a Mexican Pompeii because there used to be a town in the outskirts of the volcano that got covered in magma after it made eruption back in the 50s. The interesting part of this tour would be visiting the Old Town Church, which was the only building that survived the disaster. And you can also climb to the top of the volcano if you feel up for it. 
Now, if you want to go lay down in the sand, get tan, and have a mojito, well, you can drive south until you hit the coast. It takes about four hours to get to Lazaro Cárdenas, which is a port town with beaches that seem to be the most, most visited by the locals. Now, if you're up for exploring, you can find smaller towns all along the Mexican Pacific coast. So there you have it. I think we covered most everything when it comes to having fun and enjoying yourself while in Michoacán. Now you'll discover there's a lot more to do when you start your new liker. And once you do, I would really appreciate if you share your experience with us. Now, if you still have some questions or want us to explore other options, visit my channel and subscribe. That way you'll get access to a ton of information, tips, suggestions, other city tours, and so much more for a smooth transition to Mexico. Well, there you have it, amigos. I hope you've enjoyed seeing Morelia as much as I've enjoyed showing it to you. If you want to learn more about living in Mexico, I highly recommend you check out our Living in Mexico email series. And let me know in the comments if you feel that there was something left out of this video or what you think of Morelia. Once again, you are watching Mexico Relocation Guide. My name is Mariana. This isn't a goodbye, just hasta pronto. And I will see you in the next video. Nos vemos.